Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. We're here at GDC 2015 at uh, Fove's event. Now I'm here with Lachlan Wilson. You're the CTO of Fove. Yep. It looks like an HMD, and that's what it is, is for virtual reality. But yep. the technology that you guys have developed uh, is something we haven't seen before, which is eye tracking. Yes. Eye tracking built into an HMD. That's correct. Um, in previous technologies, we've seen sensor bars, you know, yep. low monitors that can scan your eyes yep. using IR uh, LEDs. That's right. And that's similar to what you're doing as well. That's right. It's, it's the same principle. Where we're using infrared light to illuminate the eye and we're doing a dark spot tracking system at the moment so we light the eye up from the side and collect an image from the front so in addition the pupil. so it's a, a ring of IR LEDs around and what that does for the camera is mask out everything um, except the center theoretically basically everyone's eyes reflects roughly the same color of light under infrared illumination so for example you've got brown eyes I've got blue eyes it makes processing just a lot easier we don't also, there's not, we can't control the amount of visible light that's going through a system like this because it's displaying dynamic content. Right. So we must go to infrared just anyway, and also it's very convenient for us because it's our, like humans reflect roughly the same color regardless of race. So the, the HMD itself, there's the display, you say it's yep. an LC display with 1440p resolution. That's correct. Um, about how, how many degrees field of view? Roughly 100, but it's very hard to put that as numbers because like every little bit of movement counts. Sure, so. and it depends on your optics you're That's using. Um, so we're using a 5.6 inch screen at the moment, so that gives you a rough idea of what we can do. And there's head tracking, so you have IMU tracking 60 hertz, yep. but the eye tracking is run separately. So, so the, the IMU is tracking at more than 60 hertz. Uh, more than 60 hertz um, as well. IMU, like, you, like our game engine will probably sample it at 60 hertz, but mm. internally it's running closer to 800 at the moment, Got and it. it can go higher. So and, and for the eye tracking then, how many frames are you tracking per second? Right now, each eye is getting probably 30 frames a second, roughly. And 30 frames a second each eye is, it's borderline, like what we'd consider minimum spec for eye tracking. We're aiming at throwing in some custom sensors, more, more custom, they're already custom, but getting a lot faster FPS out of it if we can, and maybe even building an onboard system for it. So what are the kind of things you can do with eye tracking in terms of game development and gameplay? So eye tracking really opens up a whole new world of interaction experience in virtual reality. Not only does it potentially make virtual reality competitive with, say, keyboard and mouse players, but it adds deep elements to a game that you would otherwise go overlook. Like, you're here, you're right close to a character that's completely oblivious to what you're actually looking at and what you're doing until now. So characters can be aware of what you're looking. You can look at something and the character could say, oh, hey, I didn't notice that before. Mm. Or they could smile back as you make eye contact or get angry at you if you stare too long, etc. So, so you're talking about, in terms of gameplay, one, it can be a substitute for a mouse, for a shooter, for that's example, correct. and two, a complement. Yep. Um, and, and that's something a game developer could well, tap into. Yeah. For a mouse, it's very hard to actually game with in virtual reality because you've got parallax error. Where do you put the UI? Do you project it through everything? But even still, you've got the jump of displacement, which makes hand-eye coordination horrible. Mm -hmm. But with our technology, we know where you're looking, not only in 2D, but in 3D. So if you're looking at a character who's running, the UI could be brought back to that plane, for example. Mm, as opposed to that one kind of yeah. you know, hovering UI that's at the same depth yeah, the entire time. Yeah, that'll get you parallax error. Or if you've got a projected point going back, it's still it's hard to integrate the movements required to target an enemy effectively. So the secret sauce of Fove yep. must be the algorithm you're using yep. to process that data, because you can always get IR LEDs and, yep. and cameras. So what about that's the algorithm well, makes it smooth and accurate? There's, there's more than one secret here, but um, basically anyone can get cameras and that, but you see you can't see our cameras and stuff like that. So there's quite a lot of thought going into mm. where, where we put them and how we, how we get our images and also how we illuminate the eye. That's, very important and from there of course processing is extremely important as well and we're aiming at we're aiming at high-end gaming as our application of choice for our hardware so we're we're uh, offloading some of the processing well we're offloading the processing to the computer and hitting it with everything we've got so and and two things that are unique to HMDs for eye tracking one yep. uh, depth of field Absolutely. Uh, changing your depth of field when you're looking at an object that's closer yes. to you in the space that's more in focus yep. now how is that being tracked and, and computed okay so um, we do a hybrid approach where we've got um, a combination of ray casting so you take like where your eyes are and draw rays out and also the point of convergence so when you're looking at something and the point of convergence is close enough to that object, we focus on it. If the point of convergence is not close enough, we keep looking. Do the points of convergence match with anything? Yes, no. If they do, we lock onto that. Otherwise, at the very end, we give up and go, OK, they're looking at something that's transparent, doesn't exist in the game world, and we then use the convergence information raw. 
but focus and, and the bokeh and depth of field, that's also a factor of uh, your pupil dilation as well. So. Yeah, but your, your pupil dilation can, um, can be measured and we mm. can, of course, influence that. But uh, your, it's kind of weird when you're, when you're simulating too many systems that we already have, it causes confusion. So like pupil dilation causing us to blur and bokeh a little bit would happen naturally anyway. So, cause, yeah, so we don't have to really do that part so much, but it can be done. Could be, ex how would you say, accented, for example, mm. if you needed more HDR. Now for so HMDs and virtual reality displays, uh, yeah. you're also experimenting with foveated rendering. That's correct, yes. Um, so where you focus on is where it's gonna put more anti-aliasing or better textures yep. to lighten the load on a computer. That's how, right. How does that work? Okay, so there's a couple of schools of thought on this, like for rasterization, it's different to for ray, like for ray tracing and stuff. What we're focusing on right now is making our system fast enough to do it very well. Our research with um, foveated rendering is actually a corporation with Tokyo University right now and it started last month. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not heading that research by any means, but what we're doing, what my task is as a CTO here, is to make our system as fast and robust as possible. Are so you also experimenting with uh, like distortion correction that's correct, with the yes. lenses? Yep. So where you're looking, it'll re-render and just... But particularly when you have like objects in very close convergence, um, traditional distortion shaders fail. And so when we're looking at an object at point blank, like generally speaking, our eyes actually turn in and so you get a different perspective than you would normally. And so we can calculate and simulate that as now well. Your, your eyes move so quickly, the, the angular yep. speed of it, of your eyes. Yep. Just, and, and you're confident that you know, with 30 hertz tracking here and maybe faster in the future, faster in the future. That's gonna be, that's, it's gonna be accurate enough to, to not be disorienting and be playable. Absolutely. So you guys are launching Kickstarter the, There's another, another advantage oh. that we have, like um, when people look at an object rapidly, their brain is not quite processing that image. So when you do a visual saccade, your brain, your visual cortex switches off momentarily. Mm. And so we have that little bit of time to work with as well. And also we can predict the motion of an eye in transit. So when you start moving, we can detect it and we can work out where you're going roughly. So we can do a lot of pre-processing. That goes in, back into the algorithm and I, all, that's right. all that. Yeah, that's why I said there's like, oh, there's a lot of Many layers, many layers of, of secret expertise sauce. and yeah. secret sauce to make this work. Yes. Well, you guys are launching a Kickstarter soon. That's right. We'll um, keep you posted. And we can't wait to see this. It's a thank really you. fascinating technology, and thank you thank for the you demo. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks. We'll be back with more virtual reality, more HMDs, stuff from GDC 2015 on Tesla.com. I'll see you thank next time. Thank you very time. much. Cheers. Well, I just finished with my demo of Fove, the virtual reality HMD with eye tracking and I want to share with you some thoughts. Uh, I think the eye tracking technology is sound. The, the way their cameras work and the way the IR works, even at 30 hertz, which they're using in their current prototype, was good enough for me to at least move my eye around and, and my, in, in this demo uh, be accurate. Uh, but I don't know if that's exactly the best implementation of eye tracking. And the other demos they showed, I think, need a lot of work. For example, the depth of field demo. Uh, if you, obviously, it was, a, it was an augmented, exaggerated effect where, as you looked at the character, uh, everything in the background would get blurred. But I'm not sure that that's how your brains work. Um, it's, it's a real uncertainty. Because when I look around the depth of field, I can, I can look, for example, at this scene, and not everything is blurry. So there's no exaggerated, but if I hold an object up in front of me, then I can change my depth of field without even moving my eyes. Um, they have to take into account pupil dilation in addition to just your eye convergence. But the potential is clearly there. I think that in the future you can see gameplays, uh, gameplay where you're controlling with a keyboard mouse or a controller and you have additional head tracking and eye tracking. I think the eye tracking display, uh, the, what, what's shown to the, the gamer, will need to be a little more subtle as opposed to a cursor kind of moving around, because that's actually how your eye moves. Your eye is constantly shifting back and forth, looking around, and they'll need to make that a little more subtle. There are UI things they need to figure out as well. But think, imagine, for example, an MMO in the future where your avatar, where when someone walks up to you, the eyes aren't dead eye, and your eyes will actually look around where people can see what you're looking at, not just by the head turning, the head tracking of your avatar, but also the eye tracking. So definitely a lot of potential. I can't wait to try out more of this. This is really my first time trying out Fove, and we'll have more, uh, more impressions as we check out that Kickstarter. So we'll see you next time on Tesla.com. Bye.